The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the village of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human, be human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. If you've ever done a course on homiletics or preaching, it can be compared in a certain sense like a Japanese buffet, in the sense that we as priests are able to choose from a rich menu in our preaching. We can preach on the saint of the day. We can preach on the opening prayer, which is part of the liturgy. We can preach on the first reading. We can preach on the psalm. And we can preach on the gospel. So I'm going to try to give you a very extravagant menu this evening. And I'd like to give you a tidbit on those four different areas. So if you listen to the opening prayer, I'm just going to take one word from the opening prayer and say a word or two on that. You heard the word grace. Grace. Uh, as seminarians, we study a whole semester on that one word, the theology of grace. So as we enter into these exercises, we're going to be begging, we're going to be begging the full of grace. Who is that? We're going to beg the Blessed Virgin Mary to be with us this whole course of the exercises. Amen? Amen. We're going to be begging the full of grace, the full of grace to obtain for us extraordinary graces in this course that we're undertaking right now. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the word on the opening prayer. <clears throat> okay, the first reading, you can read it and you can pull out many ideas. Many ideas. But I'll give you one idea by means of a personal anecdote. And it's this. July, June 26, 1954, a young couple was married in Detroit, Michigan. And March 27th, the following year, 1955, their first son was born. So if you're a math major, June 26, March 27th <laughs> would be nine months in one day. <laughs> so when they were in their honeymoon 
in Niagara Falls, that's where they went. And any people from the East Coast, you know that that's where they would have their honeymoons 50 years ago. And then the couple had another child that was born on leap year 1956. So that their second son was born within 11 months, called an Irish twin. Okay, and that second son is the one that's preaching to you right now, okay? <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'll, I'll drop the bomb. I'll, I'll drop the bomb. Now, probably one of the most controver controversial topics is this, is my parents didn't use contraception. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? <laughs> With the nine children. So I'm saying that because one of the reasons why there's a lack of priests is that we're not obeying the first reading. What did you hear? Two times increase and multiply. That was the first command to Adam and Eve, right? And here you have it. After the flood, increase and multiply. So, my friends, don't be afraid to have a big family. Some of you are saying, well, we can't father, we're 60 years old, okay? <laughs> St. Elizabeth had another child, right? Okay, our first child. Well, tell your children. How many parents here? T tell your children to have a big family. Can you do that? Yeah. Tell them for me, okay? Be open. Be open to have a big family. Be, be open to have a big family. One other personal anecdote. Uh, my, my parents had boy, 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 then finally a girl, and her name is Victoria. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> But, but listen, uh, my dad died two years ago, but about four years ago, he was, telling, he was telling me at the table when I was at home on vacation that he was writing down our names because he wanted to, he wanted to give us all the opportunity to go to, to college. And just see the trust and divide properties. He was writing down on a little piece of paper Mike, Ed, Tom, Chris, Vicky, and next to each one, okay, this is going to be these thousands of dollars. This is 45 years ago, thousands of dollars. And then, you know what he did? He took it and threw it in the trash. Shortly after that, he landed a job on Wall Street. Yep. Do I have to say anything more? <laughs> My brother went to Dartmouth, and I went to Villanova, and Steubenville, and Skidmore. We're from the East Coast, no? But I see that as trust in divine providence. So when they got married, they didn't have anything. They didn't have anything. But trust. Trust and be open to having children. And every time a child was born, my dad, a raise, a raise, a raise. And I think it's trust. A lot of couples today, they're so fearful, we won't be able to provide trust. If it's a question to have one more child and one less child, have, a, have an extra child. And God will provide. My youngest sister was born when my mom was 43 years old. I was born when my mom was 25 years old. And my mom said, my sister, her birth was easier than mine. And <laughs> she had a lot of practice, right? <laughs> so that, that's, that's my meditation from that first reading, is that Catholics today, we have to be open to have a big family. If God wants to send us a lot of children, say yes. The Muslims have a big family, right? If you ever go to Europe, you go to France, 
and Rome where I lived for seven years, more and more Muslims and less and less Catholics because we're saying no to life. So let's say yes to life. Amen? Amen. Okay, the response to real psalm, let me take one word out. Heaven. Heaven. We have to think every day about heaven. We're going to be talking about that in a few minutes when we talk about principle and foundation. We have to think every day about heaven. If you think every day about heaven, at least for one minute, the heaviest cross we carry is, is light. It is. It's light. Teresa of Avila says that our life is una mala noche in una mala, una mala taverna, if you speak Spanish, no? It's, it's a bad night in a lousy hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes by quickly. So I really believe that the heaviest cross that we have to carry, if we recognize it's over, and then we can go to heaven, we can carry the heaviest cross. Amen? Amen. Okay, the gospel. The gospel is... Jesus launches out the question, who am I for you? That's going to be one of the key questions in these next 10 weeks. Who is Jesus for you? There are a lot of Christological titles. Can I tell you who he is for me right now? There are many titles. For me, it, he is El Amigo Que Nunca Falla. Habla Espanol? For me, that's where I am at, I'm at now. If you don't speak Spanish, he is, he's the friend. Que nunca falla? He's the friend that is always faithful. That's who Jesus Christ is for Father Broom right now. Among the many Christological titles, I love the idea that Jesus is my best friend. And I'm going to be praying for you that by the end of these exercises, you're going to have three great friends. Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. Amen.